Hey everyone, welcome back to the eight. We have been wearing the same clothes for three weeks. But um, we wear four. it every day, huh? So we wear it every day. Uh, you know, uh, we're filming in advance because both of us are yes. are jet jet setting mm -hmm. across the world. So we we decided to make sure that you still get the content that you love. And I mean, frankly, we're we're getting a lot of love for the eight. So we are. Thank you to our viewers out there. So okay. this week. Um, Cassie had fear of the game that we're going to play this week, um, but it's, it's not as bad as she thought. We're going to play a game called What's in the Bag. Okay. I've put objects in here, oh and she's got to put her hand in the bag. She's got to feel it. She's got to guess not what it is, but what brand okay. it is from. Okay? Buffalo Wings and Rings, we're using your bag. Item one, guess the brand. You got five seconds to touch an item and to guess it. And <laughs> guess a brand. Five, four, three, no two, limit agency. One, pull it out. Wrong. Topper's Pizza. Next. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, Buffalo wings and wings. one. Oh! Yes! <laughs> uh, that's because Mr. Philippe has dropped off about seven billion of these all over the place. I got one of these on my first day here. No digital, save a tree. Uh, <laughs> And here we go. Five, four, three, feel another. Oh, two, there it is. one. Mosquito one. Joe? <laughs> Just taking Oh, time. close. Pool oh, Scouts. Pool Scouts. Okay. Hey, that was fun. They're all clients. This is eight. I really, this one got me. Trick play. What do you think <laughs> of that? So you were one for three? Yeah, can I get like a half point for half the Buzz point. franchise brands? <laughs> yeah, you didn't say Buzz franchise brands. You said Mosquito Joe, which is a part of Buzz franchise brands, which you can find <laughs> all of their brands. If you click the power rankings, mm -hmm. you'll be able to find it. Okay. Hey, the other cool thing that's that's happened on our site, I, I don't want to I don't want to overlook this. Um, I do think we should spend more time talking about this later. Is uh, our pretty redesign yes. that is now live, and it's not live at the time we're mm -hmm. filming it, but it's live now. So hopefully you're enjoying our robust. Mm -hmm. I like that word, robust. Robust uh, redesign. We we engineered it. Um, basically took the best practices that exist in, in all of website development and said, what would it look like if we cross applied it to our site? Constantly trying to innovate and mm -hmm. elevate uh, the experience for you, our reader. So hopefully you like it. Send us feedback at info at, info at 1851franchise.com. <laughs> it's on the screen. All right, let's kick off this eight. October 20th. October 20th. So fantastic. Obviously, millennials are driving like 99% of the trends in brands right now, and one of that would be um, digital ordering, mobile ordering. Obviously, that's something that brands have in their DNA. But now, people are starting to wonder if voice ordering and, and mobile technology like that is going to be the next wave. And there are already brands like KFC and Domino's that are testing it out to see if voice activation is going to be a way that people are ordering their food. Um, but the number of people that are, are using it for products is expected to climb by like 25% over the next couple years. So, you think they will? I don't know. It depends if it's seamlessly integrated. Like right now, I can't imagine ordering from an Amazon Alexa, which like I have and I love, but I could just see it going really wrong. Yeah, I, I, I don't know either. I mean, if, if you think about uh, speaking into the computer and having it type things, uh, that, that hasn't really, I mean, for those right. with disabilities, it, it helps mm -hmm. and it, it's impactful. So maybe there's a category. I don't, I don't know that millennials use that. Um, I mean, in, when, when I'm driving my car, I do click uh, the call button to make a phone call or to um, change the song that I want to listen mm -hmm. to. Um, but I would say that's more safety and convenience. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think the brands have gotten so innovative with their with their apps that, or even their just their mobile sites. It's it's like, do, do I really just want to say order the pizza? Yeah, I don't think that they're going to be able to do it without that conjunction of it being in their apps. Like if you have a favorite order saved or something, but otherwise you're not going to give a detailed spiel of this is what I want and hope that the yeah. computer gets it right. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's going to cost a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. But we will see. We will. We will see. 
All right, our Fran Liberty this week um, is Gene Savage, Director of Franchise Development uh, for Johnny Rockets, um, which recently launched in 1851, if you want to head to their page and check it out. Um, but he brings, you know, three decades of experience in franchising. He got into the industry right out of college, um, and, and he really credits that to that same level of success to what franchisees need to bring to the table, which is drive and determination. And he really talks about, you know, that fire that you need to have and the passion for it, which goes back, we've talked about it before. If yeah. you don't have a passion for it, you're not going to buy a new at A, and then you're not going to be good at it, B. Hey, another great story. I love. Mm -hmm. I love that we're highlighting the the franchise sales guys. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they go overlooked in franchising, and this this month <laughs> is all about them. So, another great story. Thanks for sharing that with us, Cassie. Absolutely. So now, fresh money. Um, obviously, when you sign on to own a business, you think about like the really cool parts of it. You're not exactly like thinking about the days spent doing the behind the scenes work that involves, you know, actually making your business function. Right. Um, so Enjoy Your Party, which is an emerging brand um, based on the East Coast, they're kind of creating this training program through their office manager to make sure that their franchisees are being walked through those less glamorous yeah. tasks. Um, but I think it's good to just kind of address those straight on and, and it'll be helpful for them along the way because it's not anything that you can overlook. I mean, a lot of these guys that are buying into a franchise, they don't have a ton of experience in the category they're, mm -hmm. they're buying into. They have a passion for it, but they don't know exactly how to operate all the functions of a business. And oftentimes, these aren't even business folks who understand everything from, from P&L to local store marketing mm -hmm. to operations. And, and when they go through training, they, they don't get a lot of uh, expertise or the training is so, so short. Um, you think of MBA programs. I mean, those are long programs to get you to mm -hmm. a point where you understand the basics of business and here you're throwing someone into it. So the brands that are willing to invest into their franchisees and say, look, we're, we're gonna hold your hand as much as humanly possible are the ones that seem to, to have the greatest success. So franchisors, it's your responsibility um, to try to give everything you have to the franchisee um, because technically their success will be mm -hmm. yours uh, based on the monies that will come back to your organization. Absolutely. Was, that, was, that the, was that my friend? Uh, it could have been another friend, but now we have another friend. What's that, the friend this week? It is another friend that you wrote that is up on the site. Yes. yes. Can we get a tally? Is there like a tally? Like just <laughs> I think ding, it's ding, been ding, ding, like ding, ding. all you except for maybe like two columns. <laughs> so we'll have to start switching that up. But yeah, we should. Um, you wrote a column I really liked about perception becoming reality um, and how using data kind of helps take you out of that and when you have the facts at your disposal you're better able to position yourself for progress instead of just automatically assuming something that is false. Yeah, and, and that's good Good lessons in business, mm -hmm. um, good lessons in life. Um, I can think about even battling to try to lose weight. Uh, I may tell my personal trainer that I did all my workouts. Um, if I'm lying or my perceptions are incorrect, <laughs> uh, it's only gonna hurt yourself. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think most, most things in life and in business can be measured through data. And um, it's, it's a great way that even, even those that are, are struggling to get results, take someone in franchise sales, um, let, let's say the leads aren't coming through or, or, or not, are not working through the pipeline as fast as they should. But they can point to here are the conversations I'm having. Here's the financially, uh, here's how financially qualified the candidate was. Here are what, what what the reactions were. Here's how I'm being proactive. Mm -hmm. Then effort should count for something, um, because at the end of the day, whether it's sales or losing weight, um, effort will eventually lead to something great, so long as you have a, a good vision mm -hmm. in front of it. So anyway, so I I truly believe that data sells most uh, perceptions that are are false. So check out my column. Head to 1851. Um, so now, franching forward, um, we were just talking about Enjoy Your Party, other emerging concepts. Um, there are a lot of advantages that come with running an emerging brand. I know a lot of the times, you know, if you think about a franchise, you think of the McDonald's, the huge names that you know. Um, but so we talked to a couple of the founders behind some really great emerging concepts that are out there just to kind of, you know, get their opinions on what really yeah. makes it so exciting to be a part of a new brand, whether it's, you know, that opportunity for growth in pretty much any market. Um, or, you know, having a brand that's really up to date with the latest and greatest technology just because they have recently formed their system. Um, I just think that there are some advantages people should consider. I mean, look, uh, one, one of the key reasons why you buy a brand is because of territory availability. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to buy a product and leadership, territory availability, and can I make money on it? Emerging brand should be able to win in all four of those categories if you're franchising, and most importantly, you should be able to dominate the territory availability. So as long as you're being strategic about going one market over or growing in concentric circles, then you as an emerging brand should have an opportunity to franch forward. Way to bring it back, full circle. What's next? 
Fran funny. Come on, I get one for that. Maybe. All right. <laughs> Fran witty. Fran funny. So this week um, is in celebration of Halloween because that's a thing that's happening. <laughs> I'm filming this so far in advance, it seems so far away. Um, but what kind of marketing does Dracula do? Account-based marketing. <laughs> you never like any of my puns. <laughs> okay. Okay. Way to go. <laughs> Way to go. Um, so our for inspiration this week. Um, Wait. Comes... If I'm being honest, I actually think most of our jokes are funny. <laughs> but because I have children, I try desperately not to fall into the dad joke category. And most of her jokes are dad jokes. So if I laugh, <laughs> I then, then the perception me. and da the data is there that I'm a dad. And I should <laughs> like those jokes. But my perception is that I, I don't find dad jokes to be funny. Therefore, if I laugh, then she right. wins. And, you know, I will not be transpirationed. I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, so it Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Comes from Mike Mettler, Dairy Queen's Vice President of Franchise Development. There's a great feature up on him on the main site right now. Um, he says, I look for two main attributes in a great franchisee, which are the same attributes that I have looked for in employees, teammates, and my own children. Those attributes are passion and commitment while not found on a resume or bank account. They are the two attributes that drive success. All right, Mike. Look, I love your quote, but I, I have a follow-up question. Okay. Can I, can I ask a follow-up question? Sure the same attributes that I look for in my own children. What if they don't have them? <laughs> you just get rid of your children? I mean, are you allowed to do that? Maybe his perception is that they have the, the what Mike's saying <laughs> is he's got the best kids in the world. He, he wants, he wants his franchisees and employees to have the attributes of his children. That's exactly. what he's saying. All right, go ahead. <laughs> We're on Franemies versus Frans. It's a Fran this week. Okay. So, um, I, Love the statistic from an article that we agged up on 1851 that printer ink costs twice as much as Chanel Number no. Five. That honestly blows my mind. So there's this new thing called eco branding. Um, there's a Parisian-based creative director that came up with this way to print a logo without it using as much ink. Which, yeah. if brands sign on board, which is obviously the big if in this situation, it could be a really cool way for people to save a ton of money. A just because you know if you're at McDonald's or something, printing your logo on that many items of paper is going to cost you. Um, and then it's good for the environment. It's a win-win. See that one? That's an ink-saving logo. It's actually a really interesting story, and, and I, it's, it's probably going to turn into something bigger than even just that story if, I, if I'm betting on it. Because mm -hmm. you think of the cost of a, of a product um, just by eliminating one color or, or mm -hmm. one section of it. For a small brand, probably doesn't have a ton of effect for a brand like McDonald's. I mean, you're talking about serious money. Mm -hmm. So, so it's interesting, especially the, take, take brands. If you're, if you're rebranding your, your brand, think about how, how your logo behaves and long-term, is that going to be cost savings mm -hmm. to your franchisees? Stuff to keep in mind. Anything else we need to know? I think. Hey, October is almost done. Yeah. Wild. Make sure you get those costumes ready. Cause guess what happens on the next date? I think we do it in costume. Oh, what do you God. think? No. I think no. we're going to. We're I don't think to. I have a choice, but no. We're going to. We're going to. We're, or we'll bring back the eight characters that Brian played. <laughs> okay, no, definitely that not. That guy? All right. <laughs> this is the eight. Take care. See ya.